Hello everyone, Peter here, Peter Pilsner from the Right to Repair and from the Inter team. Guys, so we've got a Yamaha. I'll show you, I'll share the screen on this one, uh, on the SLR. So we've got a we've got a Yamaha, it's a vintage stuff. Uh, I'm super excited about it actually because that's that's a limited uh, you can say edition. <laughs> Um, well, for, for the UK, it's rare stuff. Yes, it's really nice rare stuff. So it is a NS series A dash ten sixty. Um, it's it's a it's an odd one for the average stuff. It's a in a good way, I mean. And this stuff came to me because uh, volume knob is not smooth you can you can literally um, hear crackling when you go in volume up and down and then there is an issue uh, that i'd have to switch to my webcam to show you when i'm uh, recording from the phono here uh, the left channels are not working only the right ones and at one and at two so yeah the right ones are working fine you can uh, connect turntable which i bought uh, and uh, and yeah and then the if you use the bottom ones the right ones everything's fine if you start to use the the top ones unfortunately um no sound out of it yes yeah? so fingers crossed you know fingers crossed that um, that this is just a you know like a simple fix and the customer won't spend a lot of money on that uh, yeah that's not a boost that's just a sparkling water let, let's get some that's co2 subscription which i need to cancel because we don't drink so much fizzy fizzy water so co to you won't be to me anymore <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'll put it aside I'll put it on the floor just in case you never know yeah cheers guys okay so yeah so I've got a new turntable well for me it's new I always to be true want it because when I was a kid I had one and I've got dire straits here so the first song I played was the Sultans of Swing it's a bit scratched that's a I can't leave this disc uh, on its own to to go. Maybe I'll buy another one or get from someone. Uh, but what I want to say is, I've made this test and I confirm in the booking system it's exactly the faults described. Customer is totally aware about it. I didn't test, you know, like tons of feature, but I did test to the level that I know these are faults, um, and I didn't go, you know, to test everything. Yes. I've been told that this was recapped, so new capacitors has been fitted, and that's the least of our worries. And that's it. I need to take it apart and see what's in it. And I will disconnect from the power first. Okay, and I'll disconnect the turntable. Cool. Yeah, it's not a wowing turntable. It's nothing to brag about. It's a seal to uh, to serve me as a repair shop testing equipment. So that's good enough. <laughs> um, and we will see how it will go. Yeah. So uh, no space. As always, here no space. These speakers are going, you might never seen it, the cables are inside. I've seen it not many times to be true in my life. But these are, you need to turn them, yes? Turn them and that will loosen the cable and you can pull it. Okay? If you've never seen something, see now I can try to pull and it's not working. So you turn it and then it's working fine. And the same when you're inserting, you know. Uh, I was using just like 2.5. Uh, I think millimeter cable with Wardale speaker for that, so it's fine. 
Now we can switch off the DSLR. Okay. Or actually we can leave it and, and see how it will go. So let's uh, let's try to take it apart, but let's see if we can maybe have more value on this side. How what what do you think guys? Well that's closer even, so no. Okay, so what do we have? We've got two screws on the sides here. I think it's better to see on, on the other camera, on the webcam here, and I can turn it. Yay, and you can switch out the DSLR, no need. And so you've got one screw here at the top, two, screw on, two screws on this side and two on this side. I've never worked with this model, that's my first time. I won't be a virgin anymore. Rear. Hey, I've got no container for screws, and you know what does that mean. I need to find a container for the screws. Close speaker will be losing screws otherwise. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. We get a container for the screws, <coughs> and I thought in this case I will have to look for the schematics, and probably I will. Uh, but because I've confirmed the fault, I can I can uh, attempt the you know the diagnosis without the schematics, so it's fine. Nothing extraordinary here. I thought I will have to look for the schematics up front, uh, like in some of the repairs. In some of the repairs, I don't. So I won't be looking. I will be first testing because in this kind of fold, if I've tested with a uh, with a device and I confirm that that line is not working. Uh, then what's happening is uh, we should try to use technique of tapping, yes? Just tapping, tap, 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 tap. And on the whole line, yes, we should try to tap. Sometimes it's working well, you know, and you find the culprit and it's just, you know, cold solder. And sometimes it, you can't find it. Yes, you need to start proper electronic methodo methodological. Yeah, actually, I said that right. I think methodological uh, electronic, you know, fault searching. Now this again can't go just like that because I'll make scratches. So I'm gonna go for now like this, and we'll be fine. Where's my water? I feel I'll go to the toilet soon. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So, customer said uh, that here, here is a design which I've seen like back in Poland. So that's probably 90s or early 2000s that the potentiometer from the front what we see it's not the potentiometer but it's a whole long rod and this rod is going to the potentiometer and then the potentiometer is mounted at the back yes so those are the mechanical switches of course and uh, i really haven't seen it many times in my life literally i haven't seen many times so what I see here, it's okay, it's a common thing. Um, I don't see anything uncommon. But I like to see those potentiometers done in this way, like road going from throughout the whole device. And actually the ones which I saw, which I saw, I remember, it was in the um, vacuum tube radio. That's where I've seen it. I, it was not many times in my life. Probably I knew, you know, like this about electronics at that time as well. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that was that long. Um, anyways, okay, so... Oh, that's the other way around. 
Uh, now I will be the turntable. Okay, and the top ones are here. So what we should do, you know, like uh, the best procedure is to, to grab the meter. Because if there would be cold solder, then we could see that there is no connection in between. Can you see? Ah, the lamp is, I'm on my way. Actually, the lamp is on our way. Yeah, that's better. Let's do in the diode mode, okay? Well, it's like a char. Okay, so let's test first the uh, good one, the right one, because we're off the power, so we can't short circuit anything. <laughs> yeah, we can't short circuit anything, and we can see if we can find it here at the top, or or we can immediately start to look at the at the top. But what I want to say is that should be the ground. So let's maybe check the ground. Yeah, okay. So grounds are connected in them. So that's a common thing. Grounds grounds can be connected. And ground is going to general ground in the device. So that's okay. So even if I'll catch it somewhere here, no, that's not a metal. Yeah, that's a metal, you see? So that's a general ground. So that means the, the ground is fine. Uh, so it's only the line, if so. Okay. Let's insert the probe inside. Oh. Yes, so it's going to 7 ohms, that's fine. 6 ohms, yeah. So the, it's not a connection. And I can't find the right one. So that has to go in a different way. There are two type of those uh, connectors. And there are just connectors, which just, you know, you insert and the current goes through or the signal goes through. And there are connectors which have extra additional switch. It's not many of them, but you can, you can find them. Uh, that when you insert the cable inside it, yes, like here, if you insert the cable, then that automatically is a switch which switch off, let's say one connection or second switch on, then it knows, it feels where the connection is connected to, okay? That's done for a number of reasons. And these solutions are good. For instance, if you've got a TV and has a front, uh, front connectors, yes, and then rear connectors. So then this TV can feel which way it's connected to, okay? But it's it's most of the time, you know, you don't have them. Like here, I, I wouldn't expect that that switch is mounted, yes? But it's just for you to know that these solutions are existing. And yes, they are not common. And especially in the modern equipment where we use different ports, yes? Like HDMIs uh, and optical ones. Okay, so anyways, I can see the one port number one on phono that it is connecting and that's stable so i can't say that's a culprit okay uh, so in that case i would have to look at this board uh, or at the switch at the front which is the uh, switch responsible yeah which is responsible and then look for the left channel so uh, the first thing would be to look for the safe way to take it apart so that we don't damage something okay 
So I've got too much mess on my uh, table and it's no way I will be doing it in such mess uh, because one, I don't feel safe, two, I've got no place to put stuff away, um, three, if anything goes wrong, you know, like you want to move something then to place it, you know, that's so unprofessional. So the first thing what I'll do is I'll pause it and I will probably look if I can make quickly the space. If I count, that will be uh, that will be meaning that we need a second part for this video because probably what I would attempt is I would automatically, you know, like when I will make it, I would like to open it. And the point is that Okay, here is holding on this, that's fine, here is holding on this. What, I, I can make a test, because test is okay, test is fine. Uh, I don't, I don't have to open it, you know, like fully. But I see that here are just two. Uh, yeah, that, there is a, oh wow, whoa, you are. Okay, I see. I see now. Do I want to do it? Uh, I will have to open this panel here. This. One screw, two screws here. And then in theory, just in theory, that's what we can test. Uh, this should go up. Yes? Let's test it out. One. Okay, again, magic box with screws. Oh no, I'm a liar. I haven't noticed uh, two screws. So we got two at the bottom. Okay, one. Hopefully no, nothing in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's loose, loose, loose. So let's see what we can see here. Because if I would have to open it, believe me, uh, I would have to make the, you know, tidy up the table, yes? So yes, okay, good. Ah! Now it's a now it's a protection so it's not uh, on to my eyes now it's a protection uh, so it's, it's it's actually well thought because first foremost in many amplifiers i see uh, these amplifiers are done in the way that i need to struggle with accessing certain places this I like. I can tell you straight away, this I like. Um, I don't know how it's built, you know, in certain places, but for now, I've got a really, really positive uh, attitude towards it, yes? So... One... Two. Three. And four. Okay. Uh, I won't hide these screws because I don't want to, you know, like go too far. But we can put them onto here. Okay, and put it on the turntable. Okay, so now, um, now I see that I don't see everything. Okay, that, that, that's good enough. Uh, we got this connector here and this connector here. 
Okay, so this should connect. I should be able to see this connection here. So guys, the second one, uh, which should be there on the left, should work. I mean, that signal should go through because how I see it, you, you can't see it, but I will show you if possible. And as you can see, that, that's the problem, it's just like really dark. Okay, so what it is, is that you can see that this on the left and this on the right are those two connectors, okay? And both of them are going on the other side of this board here, yes? They are, they are both going through. So in that case, we should be able, you know, we should be able to uh, use a probe on one side and use a probe uh, on the second side and have a signal, whereas I didn't have on this one. I did have on this one, that's fine, but I didn't have on this one. Whereas when it's connected, uh, I don't have on either these two on the left, okay? So let us now check it. Let us now check it. Uh, because I now I'm 100% certain that we should have this. I can switch it off maybe right now. Yeah. Uh, that we should have uh, pass through. The signal should go through. Yes. Okay. So now let's check it. Which one it is? Oh, I need that light. Sorry, guys. It's just that it's bonkers. Yes, now I should have. Oh. Yes, now it's okay, and now it's 0 0.01. Nice. Me like it. Me like it. So it's a brilliant short. Okay. And here, the same story goes. Oh, come on. Brilliant, okay, so in that case, that's mean that the connector in either of these two should work no problem. So it won't be a connector, that's what I wanted to do in the first episode, to establish if that will be the uh, connector, okay? If it's not a connector, I need to browse and uh, look what's causing that. Okay, so, okay, it's here, good, and this one now, it doesn't go anywhere. So the question is why one connector is is going through okay whereas the second doesn't like to go yeah, that's a ground that's what i'm not worried about but why this one okay that's interesting so uh, we got on the phono one everything is looking okay everything works fine the way i would connect or like see how it's working and on the phono two this doesn't but when i'm 
when I'm shorting uh, through the connector only, inside the connector and at the pin where it's soldered, it's fine. Okay, so maybe it's in a different place. Maybe that's why I couldn't see it. Ah, okay, so it's a, okay. It is my fault. The design is slightly different on both. Okay, so that's fine. So it's me talking rubbish, not stuff is bad. It's just me talking rubbish. Okay, so now I can take my time and see where this one is going because I see that Okay, I see some I think I'm, I'm not 100% sure I'll need to see follow the traces because these traces are looking like they are uh, eaten by time you can say it yes so these traces are not in the ideal shape and I will have to take my time and look trace by trace component by component and go that line and then I will have to uh, I'll show myself a bit more. Then I need to go the right side way, which is working fine, yes, and see what voltages I have, where the input is going. Uh, I'll look that through the schematics because that will be quicker. I can look for certain components and check those components. And then when I see um, at those, com those components which right will be equal to the left, uh, then I can compare at, at which point it's changing, okay? Maybe we'll fix it without oscilloscope even, yeah? Maybe we'll just fix it with digital multimeter if lucky. So, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely episode number two because I want to take my time and then show you uh, how I diagnose it what I found, you know, uh, and that will allow me to clean up this table because I don't feel comfortable right now and I see that I need to open it more. So guys, that's everything in the part one. No, we got some parcels. We will see what we will do in the next episode. So we got two parcels which came from eBay to me. This thing first, that's probably to the uh, vacuum cleaner I was fixing. Probably, that's what I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah it's a box of all the connectors. I was right. Okay. So you can open it. You see, so it's a different sizes of connectors. Oh no, I've made a mess. Oh, couldn't save it anyway. So it's a different size, yes? Those. And they've got, they are married with each other. So it's a in and out, yes? Oh. One way and another. I bought because I never had them like in a bulk. So I've decided, yeah, I'll buy. Uh, only I need to tidy it up better. Because it's a mess. So now at least if I need to connect cables, I won't have to, you know, do it my way. Okay, and let's see here. Uh, what do we have? And we can finish the video. Maybe something to fix something, you know? Not just to add to my collection of stuff. Ah, guys, what we have uh, are two batteries to the DSLR, to the Canon 550D, yeah, 5, EOS 550D. So these are the new batteries I've ordered. Why? Because I'm recording and in the middle of the recording, I have to pause the recording. 
go charge the battery and then I can continue my work <laughs> so it's a bit bonkers I will maybe uh, record how I will trace this you know by using this methodological uh, yeah that's the battery pack Seven point four volts, twelve hundred milliampere. So that's that's a very good thing because I'll check if they are charged, pre-charged, yes. And if no, I'll charge them. And I will have to do big poses of uh, during the repairs, yes. So that's a, that's a positive thing. So okay, okay, uh, guys. And I bought a keycat because I. I couldn't be bothered to look for my way. I know it's somewhere and I've made a mess in the what I called cold room. And yeah, I I mean I took some of the stuff to the recycling center. I didn't take everything because I was wearing, waiting on the springtime. But now it's a Easter, you know, on the day of recording it's a Saturday before the Easter. So I will go back to that, uh, you know, after the Easter, when it will be warmer uh, and I will take up the rest of the stuff and then I can, I can move on with tidying up and having stuff over there which I don't have to have heated room, yes, because that's what it is for. So guys, uh, with this we are able to recover my get a grip album and my lights in the car oh so yeah get a grip yeah who likes aerosmith knows what it is who don't like aerosmith well your loss or your gain who knows uh, that's not the point the scratches are there and polish will polish guys let's fight for the right to reply yes Let's don't give up, let's integrate. That's why we need an inter team. New people are approached uh, are, are approached by myself and by our new guy Dylan. So we are talking to people about this and about the inter team. And it's it's starting to happen guys. We just need to finish a few websites, like this website we need to finish right now within a week time. Uh, and we will finish the content on Book Repair Online, which now has a system to pay for the repair. So if you don't want to pay um, through, let's say, cash or bank transfer, you can pay inside the, um, the Book Repair Online system, which is a fee only of Stripe. So it's a small fee. It's not like PayPal, a huge fee. Uh, so it's far better. And uh, that that was coded just recently by my friend Chris Krzysztof actually because his Polish name is Krzysztof it's like Peter and Piotr yeah the same thing uh, so yeah so he's done it and I tested it and it's working fine during that process only we had issue with emails so I need to check why emails are not sent so I, I will fix it that's okay um, just a bit of a time so yeah so we get an update you get an update uh, from me, you've got a preview of this repair. You've seen new things probably. And that's it, that's it. If you've got a repair shop, you can get back to us, yes. Book repair online or at the right to repair uh, or at the Inter Team website, yes. And links are below the videos. Uh, always, at all the videos, I'm trying to send those links. And we, we will rock it. We will rock it, guys. For sure, we will rock. I feel it. I just, I just know it. We will rock it. So, guys, thank you for taking a part in this great adventure in the first steps of the right to repair happening in the UK while we speak. Be with us. Join us. Let's fight it. Take care. Bye bye.